All right, everyone, here we are. We're uh, doing a little pasture walk. We had uh, three calves born overnight. So just this week alone, um, we're at about six healthy calves. So it's, um, it's really cool. There's a little guy over there. So this is, uh, you know, this is what most in this business industry refer to as calving season so um it's a great time of year it's uh very exciting you know um, these mothers have been you know carrying these babies for nine months and uh this is the season in which they drop so it's uh it's pretty cool to see it's exciting especially when they're when they're healthy uh as as great of a season as it is it's also a little bit of a nerve-wracking season as well because you know you just sometimes the mothers struggle and we've dealt with that in the past and um, you know there's a lot that goes into a calf dropping right so it's like when that calf drops and you see it on the ground and you see it here you're like wow what a uh, what a gift what a blessing right because so much has to go right and so much could go wrong so we're uh, Whenever we see a calf at the ground, it's like, wow, that's amazing. And it's why we do it. It's why we do this. You know, you're, uh, you know, we started this herd right here. Look at it, right? Sorry, I'll go slow. I know sometimes I get yelled at for fast camera work. But, uh, you know, we started with 13 cows. That's how we started this farm. We started this farm with 13 cows. I remember, I always tell this story. Um, Lauren and I, um, you know, we, we found this farm. We were actually in Florida and we came up to visit our folks on Long Island and we saw this uh, listing for a farm and, you know, we didn't know anything about farming or farms. And we said, well, let's, uh, let's take a ride, check it out. We didn't really know what we were looking for. And we came to this farm and we saw this acreage and we'd never seen you know, 130 acres before. So it was like the largest landmass that we had ever seen. So we end up going through the journey to, uh, you know, um, you know, get the farm from this, you know, lovely lady that, uh, and her family that trusted us to do this. And it just worked out really nicely. And once we got the farm, we looked out and we said, well, look at all this land. What are we going to do with it? And I said, well, we should probably get some cows. And the crazy part is we didn't even know what we were looking for. So, you know, most people don't know this or, you know, farm types do, but it's very hard, you know, to buy livestock because it's not really listed anywhere. It's not like you just Google livestock and you, you know, can all of a sudden find it. I mean, you can find some, but so your options are like the auction which, you know, we heard nightmares about. We didn't want to buy directly from an auction just because, you know, we've heard that cows can get sick and the animals can get sick and they can, you know, bring, you know, their sickness to your farm. And we just didn't want to, we didn't want to deal with that. So I go on Craigslist and, you know, this guy says, uh, you know, selling 13 cows, you know, some female, some well, two steers, and there was no bull so we uh we took a drive over 40 minutes away and um well before that he actually called us and he's like listen i don't know if you guys are serious or not but we are moving to wyoming in the next week or so and i have to get these cows off the farm so i'll give you a great deal so 13 cows we go over we check them out we have no idea what we're looking for and uh i said well they look good we'll take them so instead of him bringing them to the auction we ended up picking up those cows and it was uh it was awesome so we we uh we got 13 cows for 7500 bucks which today would be an amazing deal because most of those cows were also bred so that was the first 13 and uh 
I said, wow, that was really cool. And then, you know, uh, we looked out at 131 acres and we said, okay, well, we got, uh, what do we got? We have um, 13 cows. It didn't even look like there was like any cows on the property. So I said, well, this is kind of fun. Let's go find more. So back to Craigslist. And then I found this other guy that was selling, um, what was he selling? He was selling four mamas and three calves, so another seven. So we drive 30 minutes away, really nice guy. And what did we do? We bought his seven and now we're up to 20. So we got 20 cows and we just started this farm. And this was again, I think we paid 4,500 bucks for those cows. So we're in for like 12 grand and we got 20 cows. And we're like, this is this is kind of fun. So that's sort of how our, our cow journey started. And then, you know, we um, we ran into one lady that you know was selling calves, and we bought a, four of her calves, and three ended up dying. They were just not really good quality. So we started. We took a little beating on that one. And look at this little guy. He's hours old. Um, so yeah, so that's how that worked. And we just kept going and adding strategically. And then we said, okay, well, you know, we're definitely gonna, you know, need a bull. And, and then the bull started, you know, in uh, breeding, I was gonna say impregnating, breeding, um, you know, those females that we got that, that made up to 20. And then all of a sudden calves started to drop. And, I, and it was like the most amazing thing because we had never seen that before. I never experienced that before. And then all of a sudden 20 becomes 30. And then, you know, you uh, a farmer not too far from here, an older gentleman, really nice man, reached out to us and said, hey, I have to go in for back surgery. And this is just a lot for me to handle. Um, I have 19 cows uh, that I'm gonna be selling for like $15,000. So what did we do? We drove over there and they look great. And then we got our, another bull, um, Patrick, he's over here. He's a Hereford bull. And then we added another 19 and this thing just kept, you know, growing and growing and growing. Look at this little guy with his mommy. And, and that's, uh, and that's how it kept going. There's Patrick, big guy over there. Uh, kept growing and going and before you know it you know you're at like 135 cows and you're starting to say oh my god we don't have enough land so right now we're we're a bit overpopulated um, with cows so like I always say in the videos right we're gonna have to reduce down a bit and I, I'm, I struggle with that because I see what's happening in the cattle market right now and yeah we can make a bunch of money at an auction and selling but like we also need cows for our stock as as the meat side of our business grows so you know you got to always be forecasting so i'm going to throw this out there for those of you out there that are watching this that are looking to start a farm or start a homestead or whatever you may be looking to start just a couple quick tips number one it's much more expensive than you think so don't overspend on the property don't overspend on that because the infrastructure is going to cost you quite a bit you know i gave you some numbers on purchasing cows i didn't talk to you about what it costs to feed those cows um you know our feed bill for this year we're we're over fifty thousand dollars to feed to feed the herd and and then the minerals you know those trade at about 30 bucks a bag 32 dollars a bag actually 32 um, you know, you have, uh, you know, some occasional vet visits, you got some things that you need there and, um, you know, trailering costs and, you know, just a, a bunch of stuff. So it, 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 it adds up. I remember when we first got the farm, again, not having a background in, in ag and, and farming, I was like, holy cow. Every time I go to the tractor supply, it's 150 to 200 bucks. Every time I 
Um, you know, every time I, I have to, uh, you know, make a purchase of any kind, it's a couple hundred bucks, a couple hundred bucks. So I think where a lot of people get in trouble on the farm is that they don't a realize how much it costs or they don't know their numbers. And then B, uh, it just kind of adds up over time. So you got to be prepared for this if you're going to get into it. And, um, you know, it's it's sneaky. And the worst thing you could do is be undercapitalized and you can't feed your animals and you have to make decisions based on being undercapitalized, which, which are costly. So, again, building up this herd was a really big deal for us. It took a lot of time, took a lot of energy, um, took a lot of financial resources. But it's something now that we're we're proud of and we're just now working to breed it and make it better and better we'll maybe bring in some you know strategic registered stock um something we're thinking about um next year we'll really upgrade our bull and you know start to transform the genetics of the herd um to like i always say that that short and stocky and bulky barrel on toothpicks hi buddy Hi, and and uh, just make a herd that uh, just has really great breeding genetics. Um, you know, for us, which kind of cool is, um, you know, we uh, you know we have a customer base that that appreciates you know grass fed, grass finished beef. So we don't have to invest in grain and those inputs. So that helps us again on the cost side. But you know. Today, I just wanted to talk about how we got started in this and, and how we started to build out this herd and, um, you know, what the future brings. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, uh, but I do know that um, it's going to require more land. So I've said this before, uh, we're on a journey to, to acquire more land. And in that acquisition of land, it'll allow us to expand the herd even more. And, and separate the herd out to where we can put our younger stock on you know one parcel we could put our mamas on one parcel um, maybe we'll put our feeders on one parcel or we'll separate the bulls and put them on a parcel so again these are all decisions that we have to make as a as a farm and make sure that the model fits um, what we're trying to do and just always be working to get better and better but this is a good day three babies born last night it's uh, the weather's starting to turn which is excellent um, you can see her bag up pretty good down there and um, you know this baby's hanging right next to her so yeah it's a very rewarding thing you know uh, I'll leave with this um, I was listening to Joel Salatin talk about uh, yesterday and he was talking about moving to the country and you know the entertainment in the country and how different country entertainment is or farm type entertainment versus uh you know going to city stuff and shows and all that and it's definitely it's definitely quite different for sure um but but if you um haven't been out on the countryside and been on the, on the farm it's a pretty cool thing to uh to experience and and we're uh we're enjoying our our experience you know quite a bit with it so anyway for those of you that are joel salatin fans he's coming to the farm i want to say it's july 14th he'll be up here in upstate new york um we it's going to be a, a limited registration so we have uh, on our website wearefreedomfarms.com we have uh the option for you to book early and um and, be, and come see joel it's going to be a real close intimate um time with him it's going to be awesome great learning you're going to learn the business of farming you're going to learn you know all about the land animals um, so even if you have kids that you're homeschooling it's going to be a good one uh, it's going to be a lot of fun if you're a farmer if you're someone thinking about farming or homesteading it's going to be a it's going to be a real good uh, good event so we hope to see you here you know you'll, you'll have lunch come hang out and it'll be a great day here at freedom farms with with Joel Salatin. So we are freedomfarms.com. You can register there. I'll put a link below for that also. And uh, you can also, for those of you that are looking for some farm fresh, grass fed, grass finished beef or pork, 
Uh, we got our pasture raised chickens growing right now. Uh, same thing, wearefreedomfarms.com. We'll send it right to your house. And uh, that's what we got today. So I'm shooting this on Easter Sunday. So happy Easter to everybody. Have a great day, have a great night, have a great life. We'll see y'all real soon. And uh, give us a like, give, give us a, a subscribe. And uh, put your comments down below. We'd love to hear from everybody. If you have any thoughts, ideas, uh, share them. All right, we'll talk to everybody soon. Thanks again. We'll see you. Have a great day.